unlike the thumbnail suggests, I'm not actually going to try to fight code because, come on, obviously I'm going to lose that fight. We all know that. But uh, yeah, cringy intros aside, I uh, decided to do a different video. In this one, I'm going to be attempting to solve some coding challenges. And uh, the idea behind this is to practice these challenges for when you have like a coding interview, or it's actually good to do them in general to practice your programming skills and to also improve how you go about solving problem in programming problems. That's a mouthful. <laughs> so I decided to use Free Code Camp because uh, in general, it's a great resource for learning uh, programming so I recommend it for all the other stuff anyway or they have like a giant curriculum so if you go to get started you see there's a bunch of stuff that here you can do to learn JavaScript I highly recommend but right now I'm interested in this bottom one here coding interview prep and I've already checked out like uh, descriptions of a couple of programming challenges here I'm gonna skip the algorithm and data structures ones because based on my experience I feel like they're not that relevant to web development to be honest they are relevant if you want to do data science or games programming or stuff of that sort, or if you just want to learn more about programming in general. But um, when you do web development, you're not going to need to like, uh, I don't know, what is that? Do a, like a linked list and do a bubble sort or whatever. So I'm going to skip those. And then we have these take home projects. These are projects that you do and then you send and then free code camp assesses and gives you back like a score or something. So I'm going to skip those. We're only interested in the ones that kind of give you results instantly. So this Rosetta code ones uh, seem cool. So let's check out some of them. So let's check out this uh, 100 doors. So 100 doors. There are 100 doors in a row that are all initially closed. You can make 100 passes by the doors the first time through. Visit every door and toggle the door. If the door is closed, open it. If closed or if it's open, close it. Okay, so we already know that these doors can be booleans because open and close can be true or false. The second time you visit every second door and toggle it. The third time, every third door. Okay, cool. So you do... So I assume the passes are the same number as the doors. Implement a function that determines the state of the doors after the last pass. Return the final result in, ar in an array with only the number or the door number included in the array if it's open. Function get final, do uh, f final open doors, num doors. Okay, so it says 100, but this can be any number of doors. Okay, cool. By the way, guys, there are two things that I recommend you do. Number one is to pause the video before I do the challenge and then you give it a go and then see how it goes and then keep watching and see how I solve it and then compare your solution to mine and see maybe there's something that you can learn or maybe there's something I could learn maybe you can solve it better than me who knows I would like to see some of your solutions in the comment section actually number thing that you can do which is highly recommended is to like this video right now and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet thanks okay let's give this a go so I'm actually not gonna write code here because this doesn't have a lot of utility that VS Code does when it comes to writing code. And also I'm gonna show you something cool. So let's go, I'm gonna go to my desktop and uh, let's create a folder here. Let's call it coding challenges. And let's open this with VS Code. Let's create a new file here. We'll call it whatever test.js, I guess. And uh, let's copy that function from here and then paste that there. And I'm gonna show you something cool actually. So let's go to the marketplace. Actually, I think I have it installed. So installed, you can install this extension. Where is it? Why do I not, do I not see icons? Yeah, okay, so this one, yeah, JavaScript REPL. This is pretty cool. It's a utility that allows you to print stuff in the same file and then you can use it to test. As you can see here, it says console log and then you immediately set the log next to it, which is really useful. It also shows you how many times a loop has executed or a function. So it's pretty cool when you're doing something with like, just like a, a separate piece of code and then you want to profile it and see how it performs or you want to see how it works. It's kind of like a, a better console. So install this and enable it. And then let's go to our test. Let me make this really small. And here you can see, we can already say, for example, console log num doors and you can, okay, it's not showing it because we have to start it. Yeah, we have to click this press uh, display button. Okay, so, all right, my bad. They're still not showing it because we have to call this function. So let's say we call it with 100. There you go, you see 100 right next to here. And by the way, you can also do this. So if you have the name of the variable, you can just do a comment and then do equal. And this does the same thing. You see the number 100 there. Cool. So first thing, let's create this array of doors. So I'm gonna say const array, or let's call it doors equals 
and let's create an array. So we'll say uh, uppercase a array dot from, and now we can say here in this object length equals the same num doors. And then because they're all initially closed, we can populate this with the value false for every item in the array. So we'll say dot map, and then for every item we're gonna we'll just say i. We're gonna return. Oops, we're gonna return false. So now if you do comment equals close this. Oh, actually, no, this should be an arrow. No, this should not be closed. That's fine. There you go. If you scroll, you'll see false, false, false a hundred times. Cool. So next line. So we need to loop through them and then we open every door and then on the next loop, we open every second door and then close the other doors as well. So it's a toggle. So we know we need a loop with the same number of num doors. Hmm, let me think. So I'm probably going to speed up this video over some parts where it's like just me thinking or like just messing with code. So yeah. All right, so we're going to do a for loop. So let i equals zero, i smaller than the number of doors, and then i plus plus increments. Okay, let's see. So every first door, and then on the second one, every second door. Okay, so actually here, we need to change this to one, and then the i will be smaller or equal, because we need to open every door. So I want this to start at one, because we're going to do another loop inside of here. So we'll say, let's say four, let j equals now we're actually going to loop through the array itself so we'll say zero and then j smaller than num doors and then j oops j plus plus increments actually let's have j as well start at one and then this will be smaller or equals and here we'll say doors j will equal uh, actually not doors j so we like toggle it. So if it was open, we close it and vice versa. But here we don't want this to do this every time because we don't want to toggle them 100,000, uh, 10,000 times and that's it. We need to make sure that J is actually the correct door. So for example, when we are at one, actually let's do a small example so that it's simpler and easier to understand. Let's do an example where there's four doors, right? Let's do some comments here. The doors will start as false, false. Actually, I'm just going to repeat this paste this and then false We're actually four, so we have four doors now first time we want to open all of them true second time we want to toggle only the second ones so because now it's true 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 actually let me paste these oh, paste these here second time we want to toggle these so false and then false like this and then third time because okay it's here this will be false and then false like this third third time we only want to do the third one so we'll just switch this one and then on the fourth time, we're just gonna do the fourth one. So we'll do true here. So if it would be four, we're gonna return an array that says zero and three, because these are the doors that are open. Cool, so let's see how this works. We need to make sure that J, which is the index of the door, modulus I equals zero. For example, if, we're, if I is three, here we only want to open or toggle the door three, six, nine, and so on. So here we'll do a condition. We'll say if J modulus I, oh, actually inside the condition, I don't think I needed those parentheses, but whatever, equals zero, then we toggle the door. So we'll put that inside of there. Actually, I'm just gonna test this now. So once we're done, we're just gonna say return, return doors, oops, doors. Okay, let's see what this returns. Can I see the result of this? Okay, here we have four, but we got five doors. Why is that? Okay, it's probably because here we're adding some uh, new item to the list because J is bigger than oh, yeah, J will be uh, at num doors at the end So I think we should change this to zero and then J should be just smaller or, e or just smaller than num doors and then we'll check if J plus one Mod I let's see. Okay, so true false true perfect So now it's actually working as intended and now we just need to return these indices So zero and three so I'll do a quick and dirty way. Let's say let door indices equals an empty array and then we'll say doors dot for each door we're gonna see if if door or just if door because it's gonna it's gonna be true we're gonna say door indices dot push actually we need the the index as well so here we'll do index and then we'll push that index inside that array and then we'll return these door indices so in this, oops, just copy this and then paste that there, save. Okay, zero and three, perfect. This should actually work. So let's copy this entire function and paste it here. 
and run all the tests. Cool, okay, so this fails. Should produce the correct results. Let's see, 100 dollar Okay, I think... Oh, I think they want us to return the number, but not from, uh, not like starting from zero, like how normal people count, not like how a computer counts, starting from one. So what we can do is, I mean, we could push index plus one. I think that would, uh, maybe that, I think that should work. So index plus one, let's run all the tests. Yay, actually works. Cool. <laughs> nice. All right. Let's see, how can I clean this up? Okay, so actually here we don't need this doors, uh, doors indices. We could just uh, alter the doors itself with uh, reduce. So we could, what we could do, I'm just gonna write it here. So doors dot reduce, and this takes a callback function. So the first will be the array that will accumulate all the results. And the second will be the item itself. And the third will be the index because we're gonna need it because this is exactly what we want to push in an array if the item is true. So let's do an arrow, an arrow function and then here we'll say if item, to be more explicit, we'll say if item equals true and then we'll say, so we need to push this into this array which is what accumulates uh, the the array that we want to return at the end. So we'll say array dot push and then we'll push that index. Yeah, and then here we can give another parameter which is the initial value which is just an empty array. And now we could actually just comment this Okay, I can't remember the push of undefined. Actually, here we need to say return array. Yeah, there we go, cool. So now we just return doors themselves and that should be the same. Okay, wait, now I need to reassign it because this does not edit the doors itself. So we'll say doors equals, and yeah, this is a constant. So let's switch this to a let. There we go, so we get zero and three. And of course here we need to push index plus one so that we get the correct number, like the human number. Cool, so we can get rid of this and I think this is fine. So we can just keep it like this, copy that, paste it here, test it again. And there we go, still working. All right, so that's cool, I like that one. Let's go on to, again, to Rosetta code and try to do a different one. So where were we? Yeah, Rosetta code here. Wait, it didn't mark that I did that one. Interesting, okay. Okay, maybe I needed to do something else. Oh, okay, so submit and go to the next challenge, okay. <laughs> All right, 24 game. The 24 game to suppress the mental arithmetics. The aim of this game is to arrange the four numbers in a way that when evaluated, the result is 24. So we get, okay, so we get it as a string and then we return an expression, like a, an arithmetic expression that will calculate that number or like the number 24 rather. Okay, I think this is useless. I mean, it's useless for web development. All right, so I'm just gonna skip that one. Let's look at this, 9 billion names of God, the integer. Um, okay, I'm just gonna keep looking through these until I find like a relevant one. So, ABC problem, you're given Galatian. Okay, this one is cool. This one is kind of similar, I think, the other to the other one. We're still manipulating some array and then we wanna like find this. So this is cool. So you're given a collection of ABC blocks, e.g. childhood alphabet blocks. Uh, what is that actually? Let's uh, Google this. Oh, okay, so these blocks. All right, so I guess each one of these is kind of like similar to one of these blocks. Cool. There are 20 blocks with two letters on each block. A complete alphabet is guaranteed amongst all sides of the blocks. The sample collection of blocks, there we go. And implement a function that takes a string word and determines whether the word can be spelled with the given collection of blocks some rules to keep in mind once a letter on a block is used that block cannot be used again oh okay it makes sense because yeah it makes sense because if you use this block it doesn't matter what other letters are on the other sides that block is already used and the function should be case insensitive of course i was going to do that anyway because it's safer okay so i assume what we're going to do is we have these words we're going to split them into like two string or two character strings and then compare against this and then, wait, actually a squad has five, so, hmm. Wait, no, I'm stupid. Once we use a block, you can't use it again. So every block will just be used for just one letter. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. So this is, actually this is easy because every block is kind of just like one letter. So if you find that letter there, you check this one and then you check this one. If you, if you don't find it, then you just check the next one. And then if you do find it, you just discard that block and then you keep going. It would have been helpful if they gave us this as an array, not as these like parentheses things. 
but I guess they don't want us to know that it could be an array that's like part of the solution, I guess. Okay. So let's just copy this and then go to VS Code. I'm going to delete all of this. And what is the function called? Can make word. Okay. So function can make, oops, make word. Uh, what does it take? Yeah, of course it takes word. And then we open the function and then we have our blocks. So what I'm going to do here, oops, I'm going to, so select this uh, first open in parentheses. Actually, how are we going to have these? Um, okay, we're going to have them as tuples. So, or actually just array of arrays. So what we're going to do, just select the open in parentheses and then control D, select all of them down to this bottom one and then replace that with a square, oops, a square bracket. Okay, square bracket and then do opening quotes and then close it after the first letter and then do a comma and then do the same for this one and then erase the closing parentheses and do a square bracket and there we go, we've transferred them into, oops, actually, no, I needed to, so after the closing square bracket, add commas because this will be an entire uh, array. So here we'll say const, uh, what do we call them, blocks equals and then open the array and then close it after this because all of these will be inside of the blocks. So save to format. Cool, so now we're gonna get that word and then, okay, I'll show you my thought process. First thing is split word into, oops, into letters. And then what do we do? Check every letter if exists and then this card block if letter exists and then return oops return false if there are remaining letters cool so we can already run it let's say actually just copy this entire call uh, paste it here and then uh, let's take one of these examples so bark and then put that there and now so we have the word, so what we can do, we, let's split the word. So we'll say const letters equals word dot split. Um, I believe this just split by a string will give us all the letters. So let's do that. Yeah, perfect. So now we have the letters, we could just loop through them. So we'll say for let i equals zero and then i small, or actually we could just use for each, what am I saying? So we can say letters dot for each because it's an array and what happened for each so for each letter we're gonna check so actually this needs to go oops, this needs to go inside here we'll say how do we do this um yeah actually we're gonna have another for for each inside of here so we'll say blocks dot for each and for each block now we can actually check if this letter exists so we'll say if and because these blocks are arrays, we'll say if block dot includes, and we'll check this letter. So if it does include that letter, then what we can do, we can remove this block. And because this uh, blocks variable is actually scoped inside of the block of the function itself, we can edit it. We can remove blocks and not worry about the next execution because the next execu execution will have the complete blocks. Cool, so we'll say, Actually here we can get the index as well. So we get the block and then we get the index. And now we'll say if block includes that letter. Okay, actually, how do we know which letter was found or which wasn't? We can't remove it from the array because that might confuse the for each. Okay, for now what I'm gonna do is, yeah, let's say const. Actually first I forgot we need to transform this to lowercase because these are in uppercase. Or actually, what am I saying? These are in uppercase, so we need to transform the word itself to uppercase so that the comparison doesn't fail. So we can just say that here, word equals word dot to uppercase. And now those letters, okay, why is it not printing? Okay, because this, there's an error here, so we can just comment this. Well, let's just bring it back. So letters dot for each letter. Letters has already been, oh, okay, sorry, there's a constant here. <laughs> okay, so here found uh, letters. Or actually, let's just say found word. We're going to concatenate it. This will be an empty string. And now if we do find uh, this letter inside that block, we're just going to say found word and then concatenate that letter there. Assignment to constant variable. Okay, let's just say let. So now we add that letter and we also remove this block. So because we have the index of that block, we can just say blocks, oops, blocks. And we're going to use the function splice 
and splice takes the start and the start will be that index and it takes how many we want to remove we just want to remove one and now that block is removed and then we check the next one okay let's see if this is working so when it's done okay so now we concatenate this found word and we loop through every letter we're going to compare this found word to the original word and if they uh, are identical that means we found all the letters otherwise we didn't so we can actually say return word equals found word okay does that work um okay, let's do an equal equal um a comment equal here okay so false let's test okay so bark should return true hmm let's see let's console log the block here when we find the letter okay so the first letter is b and then now we console log the block so we get b o and then we get o b the second letter is a okay so we get n a okay it looks like for the first letter which was b we triggered two blocks so we removed two blocks and then for a we removed two blocks and then okay that executed seven times that's not correct okay all right so i made a big mistake here which is <laughs> yeah so we do blocks up for each and then which makes sure that we loop through all of them which is uh, obviously this is wrong we need to once we find one we just remove it and then we keep going we just stop okay so we can't do that with for each so what i'm gonna do let's just do a, f a regular for loop and then we'll say let i equals zero and then i is smaller than blocks dot length and then i plus plus so now we're going to use this because with the for loop you can uh, literally just break out of it once you're done and just stop executing so here same as the loop we're gonna uh, just actually copy this if statement and then remove this and then paste that inside of here so we need to check the block. So the block here will be uh, blocks with the index i. So here we'll say blocks and then access the i uh, element or item. So if blocks i includes letter, then uh, we don't need to console log it. And actually here we say blocks dot splice. How we splice just i because it's it's that one. And then because this condition was satisfied and we did find it, we're just gonna say break, which will just stop this for loop and then which means we're going to carry on and go to the next letter. There we go. So we get true now. All right. Let's actually take all of these tests. So we have this. And what do we have? We have treat. So I'm just going to duplicate. Actually, just duplicate the first one because it has that comment as well. So let's take book. Copy that. Paste that there. Oops. Oh, I didn't copy it properly. So it's just book. I'm just going to type it. And then treat. So, okay, we already get a true, false, true. It looks like it's correct. So, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to paste all of it there. I think it's correct. So copy this and paste it there and run all tests. Perfect. All tests have been successful and the solution is correct. Cool. Submit and go to the next challenge. Abundant, deficient, and perfect number classifications. These are the ones that I mean. Okay, after skipping a bunch, I think this one is cool. It's called comma quibbling. So here, comma quibbling is the original blah, blah, blah. So, so I already read it. So what it essentially does is it takes a array and then this array has like some words and then it will print out this, uh, this character here that has uh, curly braces for some reason. And then it has those uh, words. And then if it's, there are no words, you just get empty curly braces. And if there's one, you just get that word. And then if there is two, you get uh, that word, first word and second word with and between them. And then if there's more than th three or more, you get commas and then and for the last one. It's like how you say in a written piece, when you enumerate things, you say first or you say first and second. And then if you say more, you say first, second, third, and then before the last one, you put comma between them and then you say and, like when you write an actual essay or something. Cool, so this one is a bit relevant because in web development, you do a lot of like string manipulation when you want to show stuff on, on a page. Cool, so I'm going to copy this function quibble declaration or whatever. So I'm just going to delete everything here and paste this there. And let's take an example. So let's take this one. Quibble A, B, C, D, E, F. I should have put like actual words. <laughs> okay, actually I'm going to take this one. Take this. So this is easy. We just want to create a string and then uh, do these and then add commas and then uh, add end before the last one if there's more than three. So what I'm going to do, actually, I think I have a clever solution, which is 
I'm gonna add and as an actual word in the array to make it simpler. And then if it's an and, I'm just gonna skip putting commas. So and exists anytime there's more than two or there's two or more. So what we're gonna do is here when we get words as an array, we're gonna say if words dot length is bigger than one, then we're gonna add that end before that last item. So we're gonna say words dot splice and we're going to splice uh, the index that is before the last one, which would be uh, the index would be words dot length minus actually minus two because minus one would be the last one. So minus two would be the one before. So that's the index and then the element. OK, the delete count would be zero. We don't want to delete any. And then there is a third one for splice, which is what you want to replace it with. And we want to replace with and. Well, in this case, we're not replacing. We're just adding one to the array. Let's just check if that works. So let's say return words or yeah, words and then put a comma, uh, comment and then equal here. Okay, apparently it's not minus two, it's minus one. Oh yeah, that makes sense because minus one would be the last one in the array, but the length of that array would be increased now. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. It's actually words length minus one. So this is easy. Now we're just, um, let's de declare an empty string here. We'll say let, I guess it's a sentence. I'll call it sentence equals an empty string. And now we're gonna say words dot for each oops, for each word, and then we're gonna do something. So there are a couple of scenarios. The first one, when it's empty, we're just gonna return empty curly braces. So nothing will happen inside of here because the array would be empty. The second is when we have just one. So we just need to add it to that sentence. So we'll say sentence dot, actually we could say concatenate as well, or we could just do the other syntax like this. It's the same. I'm gonna go with concat for now. So let's say concat that word and then we're going to check if it's not the last one in the uh, in the array we're actually going to add this comma so we'll say if actually we need the index so here we can just say a word and then the second will be the index and now we'll say if index equals uh, words dot length minus one which means this will be the last one we'll uh, we'll say sentence dot concat and we'll concatenate the uh, Actually, no, if it's the last one, we will not. So we'll say if it doesn't equal the last one, we're going to concatenate the comma. And now after everything, of course, there are some cases that we still need to handle. So we'll come back to that. So we'll say after everything, we'll say sentence and we need to wrap it in those curly braces. So we can do we can do this or actually we can do some simpler syntax will be. So we'll do an opening curly brace and then do plus and then do uh, the sentence itself and then do plus and then we concatenate the closing curly brace. Alternatively, you can do this, but in this case, it's kind of confusing. So you can do this sentence like that, or actually like that, and that would actually work, even though it looks confusing. So I'm gonna go with the syntax. So here we'll return that sentence. Okay, for some reason with this case, it returned empty curly braces. Let's check. Oh yeah, because concatenate actually does not edit the sentence itself. It returns a new uh, variable. So we have to do this like that and then we say equals yeah there you go i think a better solution would just to use the other syntax so i'm just gonna skip the concatenate and do plus equals and oops plus equals next to each other and uh, these parentheses are redundant so we can just do that and there we go cool so now it's almost working actually the only uh, problem actually do we need spaces yeah so we don't need spaces when it's just commas but we need spaces when it's the and Cool, so we just need to check when it's the and, when it's when the word is and, we don't need uh, commas, we just actually add spaces. So we can check for that before this check. So we'll say if word equals and, we're gonna do kind of similar to this. So we'll say sentence plus, and then we'll do space any, or not any, and, and then space. And then this if statement will be an else because it's not gonna be both at the same time. So now, okay, so we get two ands for some reason. Okay, because we already concatenated uh, the word here. Okay, so we can just bring this inside of here. Uh, so we concatenate that uh, comma after, and then, so we do that word there, cool. But now it's skipping the last one because of this else if uh, statement. Actually, this condition was making it skip the last element. So this can be just, let's just remove this. So this can be just else. So if it's and we add that, else we add the word and the comma. And yeah, so we get that and then, okay, so it's adding a comma after this G and then even with the and, when it reaches and it adds the space and and, 
but that comma is already there. So what we can do, we can remove that comma. So we can say sentence dot splice, and we just splice at the so at the last one at the last character. So we'll splice at sentence dot length minus one, and we just splice one character to remove just that uh, comma. Oh yeah, splice doesn't work on strings. Slice does. And actually, slice is a bit different. Slice, it uh, it just takes a slice starting from a string. So we can do this uh, similarly. We can say we start at zero and we end at sentence.length minus one and slice returns a new sentence. So here we actually say sentence equals sentence.slice. Cool, so I removed that uh, comma, but it still adds the comma, uh, comma after the last element. So here we can just say another if. So here we'll say if. Uh, index equals the last one, which would be sentence, oops, sentence dot length minus one. Actually, we need to say if it doesn't equal, then we need, uh, then we add a comma. So here we paste that back, or actually, sorry, not the uh, sentence dot length, here there would be the words dot length. There we go. So now we get A, B, C, D, F, uh, G, and H. Cool. Let's test it with the other scenarios. So we'll have this quibble, just ABC. Let's do that comment, uh, equal, cool. We get ABC and then let's test with when there is two, we should get ABC and DEF like that and do a comment equals, cool. So this should work. So let's copy all of this and paste that there, run all tests. Cool, so that's actually uh, working. Now let's look at the code again. I think we can actually skip on adding the word and to the array. And then instead here we'll say, we'll loop through it. And then, so we're gonna add the word regardless. So we can just copy that and paste that there. And what we can do is, we can do a check. So we'll say if uh, words.length is bigger than one and the index is, the index is the words dot length minus one, meaning we are at the last one. Then before we add that word, we add the and. So we'll do sentence and then we concatenate and. And we also do this logic where we remove the, uh, the comma. So let's see. Cool, so it works exactly the same. Nice, so now it's much, much cleaner. We can remove that, we can remove this. And here where we do this concatenation, we can probably just add it here plus, and then we do that and then remove that and save. Cool, it's working exactly the same as it did before. And now it's uh, much shorter. There's probably a way where we can use reduce to not have to create the sentence variable. Of course, so I'll copy this and just paste it and test again to make sure that this is still working. Cool, submit and go to the next one. Let's see. Okay, I hopped onto this other site called Edabit, which is pretty nice. It has a bunch of challenges that you can do and you can select any language you want, which is nice. And also you can select different difficulties and also different like types of challenges, which is actually what I wanted initially. So here, for example, we can select arrays because for me, I think these are the most relevant ones to web development. And now we can uh, actually, let me start. Uh, maybe I'll start with a very easy one and then we gradually go up. Okay, return the first element in array. Okay, now this is too easy. We just return the first element in an array. Okay, let's see. Medium. Let's see. Array of multiples. Converting objects into array. Cool. I think this is just one function now in JavaScript. Let's see. So we take an object and then we want to return it as a an array of arrays. But I think it's just object.entries. Let's see. This should just be <laughs> return object.entries of... Uh, OBJ, which is what we were given. So let's check. Yeah, okay, everything passed. Yeah, this is too easy, even though it's medium. Yeah, okay, let's try maybe, let's go expert. Okay, the most difficult ones. Okay, let's see, deep arithmetics. No, I don't like this one. This is irrelevant. Let's see, what do we have? Linked list, no. Count how many times an element is repeated. Even array creates a function that returns an object detailing how many times each element was repeated. Okay, cool. This is deduping, I believe is called deduplication. Or actually deduplication is just, you just remove duplicates without counting them. This adds counting them. Okay, this is actually pretty cool. So we get an array 
and it has elements and then we want to just um, kind of collapse it into an object that has those elements and then a key is the element and the value is the number of the element. Okay, cool. So as per usual, I'm not gonna write code here. I'm just gonna grab this function and go back to VS Code and then select everything, paste this here. Okay, so we get an array and uh, the array has some strings or numbers and then we create an object. So a simple way to start is let's say, let, let's call this output and this will be an empty object and then we loop through this array. So we'll say array dot for each and then for each item. First, we're gonna check if this item already exists. So we'll say if, and then we can access it actually with this, with the square brackets and we'll say if output item because the item is supposed to be the key. So we'll say if output item, so if that exists, then actually we don't need curly braces. We could just say output. So if it exists, then we know it's at least one, right? So we actually just need to increment it. We'll say plus plus to give it plus one. And else we're just gonna say output and uh, oops, output, and then do the name of the item as the key and the value will be one because it hasn't exi it doesn't exist. We're just gonna add it now. And I think this is the solution actually. So let's say return output. Let's do count uh, repetitions and then maybe pass it. Let's take one of the examples they give us. So let's take this cats and dogs and cows. So let's paste that there. All right, okay, let's actually add a comment with equal. Okay, we get not a number. Okay, interesting. Oh, okay, I made a mistake here. So output, if that exists, then we do output item and then we increment it. Yeah. Cool, so actually that was it, that's the solution. So cat two, cow three, and dog one. All right. I think here as well we could use reduce, we don't need to create an object there. So we can say, we can say array dot reduce. So we get a callback and then uh, what we're gonna call our accumulator or for some reason VS Code is called previous value, but um, this is like the accumulator. So this is an object, so we'll say object and the current value, we'll call it item, and the index, we'll call it index. I don't think we need index, so we'll just say object and item, and then we're gonna do something. So similar to that, we'll say if object item, actually, so it's the same logic as here, so we're just gonna copy that, and we'll say if object, so replace this output with object, and we, get, we can't read cat of undefined because I think we need to give an initial value Oh, actually, we need to return it here at the bottom. So return object, because, yeah, okay. So now it works, because we need to return it, otherwise the accumulator doesn't know what the previous value was. Cool, and now we can just get rid of this, and get rid of this, and this as well, and just say return here. And there we go, that's actually exactly the same, and much more concise. And let's copy this, and make sure that it passes all the other tests, so go to code, and paste this there and check. Okay, so it actually failed the example that they gave. And okay, we get cat two, cow three, and dog one. Let's see, cow three, cat, oh, are we supposed to? Oh yeah, my bad. We're actually supposed to sort the object by uh, value in descending order. So we're supposed to sort them, um, the one that has the most to the one that has the least. And this just passed because they were sorted uh, initially. Okay. That's easy. We can just chain here dot sort. Sort will take A and B and it will do something. Actually A and B are objects, so we need to get the values inside of them. So we can actually destructure them. So here we'll say we destructure A and then we destructure uh, both the key and the value. I believe we can just do this. So K, uh, V, and do we have to give this a different name? Let's try J and X. We need to make sure that X is bigger than V, so we'll say X minus um, minus V. Oh yeah, we can't sort this because it's uh, it's an object. Let's see, let's go and Google that. So sort object by key. Okay, perfect, this is the perfect scenario. Okay, let's see. Okay.
Okay, so this is the perfect solution. So we need to say, um, we need to convert it back into an array of arrays of the keys and values and then sort those and then reduce it back into an object. Actually, we could just copy this. And um, what we can do here, so object.entries and we want to take this array. So the entries of this array. Actually, this is sick. I didn't know you can destructure this the second element and ignore the first one like this. This is new syntax to me. So this is cool. So you, we uh, convert it into an, uh, an array of arrays with entries, and then we destructure the second ones, second entries, which are the values, and then we sort. But here, actually, we need to say B minus A to sort them in a descending order, and then we reduce the array back into an object. And this should actually work. So we reduce that array, and then we return this. Does that work? Okay, we need to remove this sort call from here. Close that. Okay, so here it's um, it's, it's given us the opposite. So we're taking the key as the um, as the number, which is not correct. So actually, let's just see what this uh, outputs with just the sort. Hmm. Yeah, actually, we need to assign array this new value because, again, reduce doesn't edit the array itself, it returns it returns a new one. So now that code should work. Perfect. So now this brilliant code actually uh, sorts our values. So for some reason, this JavaScript REPL inside of VS Code is messing with me and, like, printing them in the wrong order, even though the code is correct, actually. When you um, paste this exact same code inside of Edibit, you see that all the tests fail, um, succeed, rather and the order is correct. Cool. So actually I'm curious to see solutions, so let's unlock solutions. And here if you unlock a solution, you lose the XP for this challenge, but I personally am not gonna build any XP here, I just want to see the solutions. Wow, this is cool. I didn't even know there's a, an object dot from entries um, function, which just takes entries and then converts them back into an object. This is really cool actually. It's very similar, so he creates an object and then, yeah, loops through the array and then adds it like we did. But here, this is way more concise where he does this object entries of the object and then sorts it. Very similar to the piece of code that I copied from Stack Overflow. And then the only difference is that he brings it back to an object with this from entries. This is pretty cool, actually. All right, let's do one more and then that's it. So let's go back to challenges. Maybe let's try a different um, tag. So let's go, what do we have here? We have cryptography, control flow, oh, dates. Okay, let's do dates. Okay, we only have two. So let's do day number of year, let's see. Oh, okay, this is simple. So, I mean, it's simple the way it looks like the function, but maybe it's difficult, the challenge itself. So we're supposed to take a date and then print the number of day within the 365 of the year. And also, we have to take in mind, okay, this is a cool example. This is what I like about this site. There's some cool examples that you don't even need to read it. It just explains itself. So, okay, so we need to bear in mind that uh, here, you, it could be 366, which is called a leap year. So we have to bear that in mind. All right, so let's see how we can do this. So we can take the date and then we can use the JavaScript date helpers to get the year, the month, and the day and then add all those days depending on how many months we have and then return just that number. Okay, cool. So let's copy the name of the function as per usual and then paste it in VS Code. So I'm gonna put one of these tests. So let's take let's take this one from 2020. So this is the 13th of, uh, of uh, December. Why am I blanking on December? And let's take this example, this one, because this one has the leap year. So we can uh, try and have a go at that. Okay, so let's take, let's make our date into an actual date because it's a string now. Actually, we could just reassign the variable date and we could say date equals new date and then pass it date and do our comment to make sure that's a date, cool. So actually what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna uh, create the months and then add those dates or the, the number of days depending on how many months we passed. So here we can say const months equal and let's do an object so and months in JavaScript are 0 to 11, not 1 to 12. So we have to bear that in mind. So 0 would be January. January has 31. And we can just duplicate these. So February, 
usually has 28 so let's just do 28 and then we have March 31 so this will be 2 and 1 or actually this just just could be just an array we don't need the numbers because the uh, the index in the array yeah the index in the array itself is the number so we don't need it to be an object so just remove this and this control D here and remove these so you got January February uh, March so April has 30 May 31 and June has 30. I think there are two in consecutive that have 31. Let's check. So months, uh, months, days, in year, I don't know. Let's see. Or um, number of days in months. Um, okay, cool. This is cool. Um, yeah, it's July and August uh, in a row. They have 31. Okay, so this will be 6 and 7. So 1, 2, 3, actually 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6, we're ha this is July. And then August, we'll have 31 as well. And then we'll have 30 for September, 31 for October, 30 for November, and then 31 for December. Cool, so we have all the months now. Now we need to get the uh, the day and the month and the year. So we'll say const day equals date dot get day, and let's do equal there. Okay, we get zero zero. Is it? Is it get day? Or is it get date? Okay, cool. It's get date. So because the first one is thir uh, thirteen and the second is thirty one. Cool. Now we need to do the same for month and so month and year. So get month. And this will be year, and then get year, 120. Um, oh, actually, it's get full year, get full year. Cool, so 2020 and 20, oh, 2000. Now, what we can do, we can declare this number. So we'll say let number or day number, and actually, we can just give it the value of zero, and then we'll say, so we need to loop through all the months that we already have passed. So in this case, let's say in this first one, we're in December. We need to loop through all up to November, add all those days, and then add those 13 days in December. So actually, we'll say months dot for each. And actually, we need to break again. So let's do, let's do the for loop. So for let i equals zero i smaller than we need to check month minus one because we don't we don't want to get the last one as well so month minus one and then i plus plus and then here for each one we'll say day number and then we'll add on to it so plus equals and we'll add months and we'll access i so we can get the number of days there and now we have all those days and then we add those extra days and which is just this day here okay actually this should be a semicolon and now we'll say day number plus equals and we'll add the day which is this right here and now we just return it so return day number let's save and let's select here and then do a comment equals okay so this is 317 let's check if that's correct go back to edit bit so that would be the 13th of december 2020 okay 348 okay we're like about a month off so that's because yeah actually makes sense okay actually here it's smaller than month not month minus plus, uh minus one because we're not gonna reach month anyway okay 347 cool okay now it's 348 okay i know why because every four years there's a leap year and because 2000 is a leap year that means 2020 is a leap year so every year that is a multiple of four is actually a leap year so we need to actually check for that so what we can say We'll check for leap year, so we'll say if year modulus 4 uh, equals 0, that means we're in a leap year, so we need to add one day, and we'll say day number plus, actually no, we don't need to add one day, because we only need to add one day if we are past February. If we haven't passed February, we don't add that day, because we don't have 29 days, we haven't passed all that month. So we need to add another condition here, we'll say if uh, year mod 4 equals 0 and month is bigger than 1 or actually bigger than 2 we need to have uh, passed all of February to add all of those days so if that's the case then we're just gonna say day number plus plus to just add 1 
and now it's 348. Cool, so that matches, and then that date in 2000, that's cool, so that's 366. Okay, so I think we have the solution. So we can just copy all of this and then paste it in code. And let's check. Okay, so we get two fail. Interesting. So one expe expects 61 and one expects 241. So let's check the tests. So 61 would be... Okay, so 61 would be this date in 2004. And what is the other one? 242 would be... Um, wait, no. No, it was supposed to be 241. So it's... Uh, yeah, it's this date in uh, in the uh, 1900s. So let's actually copy that and uh, give it here as a test case. And copy the other one, which was this one. So that's the, uh, the 1st of March. I believe that's American format. So let's paste that there. Okay. So if it's off by one, then it has to do with the leap year. Um, interesting. So it, it turns out that a leap year is not just a multiple of four. Also, every year that is divisible by 100 or 400 would also be counted as a leap year. So here, this is the formula how to determine if it's a leap year. If it's divisible by 4, then we check if it's divisible by 100. And then if that's the case, we check if it's... Actually, no, if it's divisible by 104, that means it's a leap year. If, the, if it's divisible by 400, yeah, it's a leap year as well. Okay, so we need to do mod 4 and mod 100 and mod 400 as well. Okay, so here where we have our check for leap year, we can say if year mod 4 equals 0, and we need to also, actually this will be an OR, so we'll say, let's wrap these in parentheses, and then here say OR, paste that, oh, actually I think I copied the wrong thing, so copy this and uh, paste here, or if it's mod 400, and then do another OR and paste, and here mod 100, and save, Okay, cool. So now we get 61 for the 2004 date and then 242 for the 1900 date. Cool. So I think this solution is perfect. I mean, it's perfect in that it works, not that it's super clean. <laughs> All right, so let's check. Okay, so this is supposed to be 60 and 241. All right. Okay, it's actually and. Okay, I misread that. I misread this code here. So yeah, it's uh, date mod 4 equals 0 and date mod actually 400 and 4 equals 0 and also 100. Cool. So now we replace with and instead of or. Copy that and let's go paste it here and check. And this time it should work. Okay, it didn't work. Okay, my brain is fried. I'm just gonna go to the solution and check. <laughs> There's a mistake in my logic somewhere. Wow, look at this solution. This is crazy. Oh, okay, this guy's using the get time and then removing... Oh, he's removing the seconds and the minutes and so on. And replace... This is actually... I would never think of this solution. This is insane. Okay, this solution is very similar to mine. So we have uh, the days... Okay, he has a function here to find out if it's a leap year. Okay, let's look at this function. So if it, year mod 4 equals 0 and year mod 100, oh, okay, year mod 100 has to not equal 0, okay, and then year mod 400, if that equals 0, then it's a leap year, so if, if year mod 100, uh, sorry, if year mod 400 equals 0, or year mod 4 equals 0, and year mod 100 does not equal 0, it's a leap year, okay, that's, yeah, I, wouldn't, I didn't know that, cool. Okay, so that's it for this one. Let me know in the comments how your solutions went and uh, if you have actually better solutions or even a different website that has some nice challenges like this. I really like to do these. And if you like videos like this, let me know in the comment. I might do more of these coding challenges videos. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.